Okay, so now that we're getting into the technical setup of things, just a quick tip, I wanna make sure you understand browser tabs. So every browser has tabs that allow you to open multiple pages all at once. I would strongly suggest having this class in one tab and your instance in another. And as we go through this video, pause the class or the video and come back and do the settings on your page. Then go back to the tab with the video and resume. All right, guys, next up, let's get to the fun stuff. So let's start to configure the site so that you can sell online. So the first thing we're going to do is configure the order settings page. So this will set the foundation for everything else you want to do. So to get there, you're going to go to settings, e-commerce, order settings. Okay, so set your new product item rows. What this is, is on the order page when a new order pops up, how many rows do you want to default as blank? Let me show you. So let's say we're building a new order here and just choose something. So this one is set to one, so only one row came up. If we set this to 10, 10, 10 blank rows would be there upon arrival. The add rows amount, what that is is when you hit this button, add rows, it will add a certain amount. So how many do you want to add at a time? With both of these settings, I would suggest if your product looks like this one, where you have most of the settings at the group level, this is a, these are group attributes, and your line attributes, these are line attributes, line item attributes are very simple one-liners, if these are one-liners, then you can make those numbers higher and it won't confuse the user. I don't think I'd ever go above five or 10, but you can do it. On the other end of the spectrum, if a lot of this information is down here on the line item, which you can do. So let's say that your product has quantity, width, height, and then another row of pictures, another row of options down here, and that repeats several times over. I would always set those kind of products to just one because if you have a lot of those popping up automatically, the user is going to get confused. So go ahead and set those settings up. The itemized order line item description, what that is, is on itemized orders, which are different from just normal online orders. They're made internally and they're more manual. You can add manual things and we'll get into that later. But basically you want to add a bunch of stuff to an invoice and not show the customer what all those details are. And on those things, what do you want to call that? That's what this is. So the allow public ordering page, what that is, is when someone lands on your site for the first time being logged out, do you want them to see the order page? Do you want them to be able to start browsing products immediately? Like this, this one is set to allow ordering. Or do you want them to be faced with a login page and not be able to see anything until they create an account with you? Like this. So if you want something like this, set it to no. Now here's my personal opinion and take it for what it's worth. I think that if you're putting your products online, you want to sell them and you want to eliminate as much of the friction out of that transaction as possible. So I think public ordering pages are the way to go. Well, then the question comes up, what about pricing? And I don't want my competitors to see my prices. And if you're worried about that, which is genuine, you can easily set up something like a retail pricing structure, which will make the prices way higher for people that don't have an account with you. Those are just my two cents. Every business is different and you know what you're doing. And don't forget this image right here is controlled by you that was set in the last step of customizing your site so let's go back go ahead and set this how you want and let's move on to set next order number so chances are the first order in all moxie is coming somewhere in the middle of your company's history and you already have a numbering system if that's the case and let's say you're on this number then go ahead and set that there and the next invoice will be that number okay so coming down to hide order percent discount what this is, is at the bottom of every order, if you're logged in as an employee with permissions, you can discount the whole order. So let's say we type a, a number in here, and it's, it's actually showing right here how much 12% off of this price is. Or in other words, it's telling you that this price is $3.68 off 
what it should have been. So what the setting is asking is, do you want to show this discount up here? Show fractions on order page. What that does is the system allows the user to put a number in in decimal or fraction form. So if your customer prefers to put it in as a decimal, but to make things easier at your shop, you always want to look at fractions. After they submit this, do you want it to show up as a fraction automatically, or do you want to allow it to look as it did when the customer put it in? with fractions or decimals. So if you want to force those to fractions, then click yes here. Auto verifying orders. I'm logged in as a boss at this company, and when an order comes in, the status is ordered. But there's a step built in between ordered and able to go into production, and that's called verified. Typically you want somebody at your company to look at the order and verify it before it's cleared for production. So this setting allows you to bypass that if you want. So if you're the owner of a restaurant and you're selling cheeseburgers, you probably want to set this just to be auto-verified. But if you're selling expensive cabinetry that's customizable, then I would recommend not to verify orders automatically. Output page folders. First of all, output pages are any number of pages that are automatically generated by Almoxie. These can be pick lists, cut lists, frame lists, part lists, invoices. Some companies think of a lot of documents to automatically create. And if there end up being a lot of those, you might want to organize them in folders. If you have folders turned off like this, then what you'll see is at the top of an order, all the output pages just listed like this. And as you can see, you can create as many rows as you want, but that might be too many. So turning this setting on allows you to organize folders for all of those pages. And we'll show you how to do that in a different step. Some of these settings you'll come back to as you progress and as they are needed. And that's just fine. Just like this one. Auto checkout supplies. So eventually, you're going to set up all of your supplies, wood, glue, everything. And as customers order products, the system is automatically going to allocate and tell you how much you need to order. And as part of that system, it needs to know what has been used. So you need to make the decision of how to check out supplies, how to tell the system what you've used. And there are a few ways to do that. You can do it manually or automatically. Manually is self-explanatory. You're going to just do it every time anyone uses anything. But you may want to do it automatically. And if you do it automatically, we need to know, do you want to do it to everything in the system? And that's global. Or do you want to choose which supplies you do it automatically with? So this is one of those settings that you'll probably come back to. And I'd leave it disabled for now. The precision of the ordering site allows you to select a number that you want to round to. So if your customer tries to order something clear down in this range, and you have it set here, it will automatically round that. When your customer saves the order, they'll see the converted numbers. And this is also something you can address in the terms and conditions that we'll talk about in one second, down here below. Okay, so the use shopping cart setting. What that does is it turns your Almoxie instance into more of a traditional shopping cart type system. Almoxie was originally built for companies that wanted to see the whole order, all the details of everything, and build all at once in one spot. And that's it's different from, say, Amazon where you browse a product and then add that product to a shopping cart where it disappears for a while. The use shopping cart setting allows you to do that though. It allows you to build a product and then send it to the shopping cart without seeing it until the end or until you want to click on it again. So with it turned to no, let's look what it looks like. This is what it looks like. So you're filling out your order, creating new products, and each new product just gets added above. And at any time, you can see everything. But with this turned on, your shopping cart now collapses up here. And you actually add products to the cart. So they disappear, allowing room for a new one to be added later. Then at any time, you can expand the cart and see what you've got. So that's what that setting does. Now let's move on to the customer order settings. So earlier we went over the difference between a company contact, a company, and an individual. So company contacts work for a company, and those are business accounts. An individual creates a personal account. If most of your customers are businesses, then you'll select business. If most of your customers are people, you'll select personal. The default lead time comes into play when you don't allow your customers 
to request a shipping date. So on the order page, if this is set to no, then the system will automatically take today's date, or in other words, the date that the customer put the order in, and add this many days, and set that as the tentative ship date. I would strongly suggest though, even though it's probably different to how you're operating now, to allow the customer to set their own date. Your company will then respond to them if you're unable to hit that date, and all of that can be worked out automatically through confirmation emails. The Terms and Conditions Editor is for you to insert your legal jargon. This is for whatever you want your agreement between you and your customers to be every time they submit an order to you. So whatever they need to sign their name to, this is where to put that legal documentation. There is a link to this information every time your customer places an order with your company, they agree to the terms and conditions and can click on a link that will take them to this text. Your All Moxie instance will come with a little bit of this filled out, just as a starting point. But like everything, please consult with your lawyer or whoever is in charge of keeping you out of jail and customize this to your company. This is also a good place to add things that protect you, like payment terms or precision and rounding settings anything that you might have to defend yourself later on. Okay, so that's it. We've filled out the order page settings. Nice job. On to the next.